Oh, um, she is, you see Daniel Kwan, you see Gina Crunch back here, she right there, she right there. Um, hey, hey, what's going on everybody? Um, uh, we're gonna, gonna, gonna try to follow up uh, Angela Bashi. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, uh, and, 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 and forgive us, my, my counterpart, the great Chloe, Chloe Jaw, uh, is a little under the weather. She's not contagious, um, but, but I'm gonna do the lion's share of the talking, um, if that's okay, so, and bear with me. Um, we gotta talk about somebody who we love a, a great deal, and um, we gotta talk through a, through a little bit of a uh, broken heart. <clears throat> um, so I ask for y'all grace a little bit. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So um, I first met Michelle Satter uh, over the phone, November 17, 2001. Um, it was a conference call, uh, and I learned that I was a finalist for the Sundance Screenwriters Lab that was taking place a few weeks later, um, that next January before the, before the film festival in 2012. And I was incredibly nervous. Um, I, I had heard about this program. All of the filmmakers that I admired had been through this program. They'd been nurtured there. I wanted to be a part of it. I wanted to be accepted. Uh, I was working on my film, Fruitville, and, and, and um, I was feeling really, uh, really like it was a big moment. <laughs> Chloe, Chloe, you know, I was just feeling. Yeah. And um, I got on the call, and folks were talking, and then all of a sudden I heard this voice. Um, it, was, it was like a, a, a magical voice, because immediately as soon as this person started talking, all my anxiety faded away. Um, it was incredible. And I was able to speak clearly and think clearly, and then as soon as we got off the call, all the anxiety returned, um, and I felt like I blew the, <laughs> I, I, felt like I, I felt like I blew the call, and, and I blew my moment, um, and I was, I, was, I was amazed to hear that, that I had been accepted um, a, few, a few days later, and, and, um, and I was off to the races to this, to this lab. Um, I arrived at the lab, and I, and I think I was late. Uh, yeah, you were. I was late, yeah. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> yes, I mean, you were. Walking stereotype. Um, but but I, come in, I come in there. I come in there late, and in, the, um, in the circle they're already talking, and it's a fire and it's snow, and I, I'm not. I'm a Bay Area guy, and I'm, I'm like excited to see snow, you know. And, and, and um, uh, and, and, I, and I sit down in this circle, and I, I feel you know deeply inadequate. Um, and and uh, and, and I missed everybody introducing themselves, so now it's my turn to introduce myself. So I, I, I fumble through that, and then I hear that voice again, um, and I see the person that is coming out of. Uh, and that person was Michelle Satter. And, and as soon as she started talking, you could see like the whole room's anxiety shift away. Um, and, when that, and when that lab started up, I met all the staff and everybody who, who was working under her there, they all seemed to kind of embody that same, that same vision, that same spirit, um, it was a comforting spirit. Um, and then I got to meet my, my lab mates and um, they showed us our, their movies. And uh, as soon as those movies rolled, I felt deeply inadequate again, you know? <laughs> Um, I, I was in there with, with a guy named David Lowry, um, a woman named Marielle Heller, and I was in there with the great uh, Chloe Jaw, and um, they played her movie, and I was like, y'all probably should switch jobs, you know? <laughs> uh, but but uh, again, we, we were mentored there by incredible screenwriters and filmmakers, and, and we were mentored by each other. We got to share our scripts with, with everybody, and, and, I, and I started to get the feeling that, that, that maybe that group of filmmakers might you know, might have a, a serious impact on the world and this industry. Um, shortly as the, as, the, as, the, as the Screenwriters Lab was, was winding down and we were getting ready to go into the festival, I had a meeting with Michelle where it was just me and her one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I got to hear that voice up close and personal, you know, um, and it was amazing. She asked me what I needed for my film. I, I, I shared with her that I was deeply terrified that I was about to be going. And, um, and she said, well, look, you need a lawyer, you need an agent, you need grants, and I can help you with all of those things. And it wasn't just words. Within days, I, I was having a meeting with my agent, who, my agent now, Craig Castell. Um, I met my lawyer now, who, who's, who's done all of, my, all of my deals since then. And um, she set us up with grants, and we were ready to get going. She was just like a complete bridge for us, who were you know, young artists coming out of school and coming out of, you know, never, having never done this before, bridged us into believing that we could, we could do something in this industry and, and maintain our voice. Um, fast forward a few months later, I. I I shot my film and, and, <laughs> and I, was, I was sharing the film around with people and everybody was, was giving me feedback saying that they liked it. And then I sent the, the film to Michelle and I'll never forget where I was when I called her. 
um, to get feedback. I was, I was standing on a corner in East Oakland, um, and I was, I was ready for that, for that soothing voice to give me all kinds of confidence, and, and, um, and she tore that film apart, man. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was the first time I, I heard that voice weaponized, you know what I mean? It was like, it was like yo, you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta fix this, and this isn't working, and maybe change this. This scene is out of place. You know, this movie needs to feel like this, 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 that, this, and this ain't working. And I'm like, man, who is this person on the other side of the phone? You know, and, and I, again, the inadequacy, inadequacy comes back, and I, I feel like a failure. I feel like I let Michelle down. And then the last thing she says to me is, hey, make sure you get a good night's sleep tonight. You sound like you haven't been sleeping. Um, I've been there, you know, a good night's sleep, you maybe look at things differently in the morning. Um, took her advice, and I went back to the edit and saw that every single one of her notes was the real deal. Um, and I realized this was the first person who was, who was watching the film and giving me feedback that actually, actually cared about me and, and cared about the film. Um, she was incredible, and, and we went to Sundance, film premieres, um, and, and, and leading up into that, she made the, the, the most incredible introduction that, that that, that she's ever made for me. Um, we, were, <laughs> we were getting ready, to, we had been, been accepted to the festival, and, and she gives me a call, and she says, hey, um, do you guys have anybody running your social media? And I didn't, I, only, I didn't ever even have a MySpace. I didn't have a social media. I was very deficient in this category. And, and, and she says, Yo, you're going to need one for your film. She says, um, I'd like, like you to meet somebody who I think would be great for you. Um, and it was our son, Michael Lapp. Um, and Michael was an ex-football player in high school. He was a star quarterback. And she knew I played football coming up. Um, he was just coming up out of Chapman and, and was very proficient with, the, with, the, with, with, with social media marketing. She thought he'd be perfect for us. And um, I, I wanted to meet anybody who's remotely related to Michelle. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah, I'll let her, I'll let her sit down with him. And, and, and Michael just blew us away. He, he, he built the most incredible social media campaign for our film before it was even acquired. Once it was acquired, the, the distribution company kept him on, made him a professional at it. And, um, and he and I got to collaborate outside of the film ministry to start Black Off and Human Rights and do all types of social justice advocacy and um, find an intersection between the, the arts and activism. Um, I, Michael's work um, changed the world. Um, to, to know him, To know him um, was to know Michelle, was to know his father David, was to know his brother Franklin. Um, and since his life was cut short, I, I, I've realized to know them is to know Michael. Um, Mich Michelle, you changed, you changed our lives. <laughs> but you're, but you're, yeah, I, I do believe Michael was, was your greatest gift to the world. And, <clears throat> and every time I talk to you, every time I'm in your presence, it feels like you're still here with us. Thank you, Ryan. Michelle, you're a mother to me. And you're a mother to Ryan. And you're a mother to so many people sitting in this room. You're a mother to all the artists that you have nurtured and supported. We're so grateful to you. We wouldn't be here without you. We know you're hurting. We're so sorry. And we know that there's nothing we can say that can take away the pain. But we we want to say, and we hope we can say this to you. We are all your children. We are all your children. We love you. We love you so, so much, and we will stand by you always, always.